to see the King. Oh, soon and very soon. Any birthdays this month? Any anniversaries this month? All right, we're going to sing for you now. Take time to honor birthdays and anniversaries. God bless you all. 
Amen. Shake hands with somebody and tell them you're really glad to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. If you're really glad to see them, tell somebody, I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. If you know God's been good this week, amen, he's been real good. Amen. Give him a hand clap for his blessings. Amen. Come on, girls, and sing. Hallelujah. Some seek for wealth down here and some look for fame. I look for Jesus, with him I'll reign. I'm just a pilgrim here, but soon I'll be gone. Nothing can hold me here, I'm headed home. Nothing can hold me here, I'm headed home. Heavenly gates are near and it won't be long till I'm walking on streets of gold. Soon I'll be gone. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Heavenly gates are near and it won't be long until I'm walking on the streets of gold. Singing around God's throne. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed if I should die down here before that trumpet sounds When they lay my body in that cold, cold ground You don't have to cry for me, don't sing me no sad songs Nothing can hold me here, I'm headed home Nothing can hold me here, I'm headed On the streets of gold, singing around God's throne. Nothing can hold me here. I'm heading home. Nothing can hold me here. I'm heading home. Heavenly gates are near, and it won't be long until I'm walking on the streets of gold. Before that trumpet sounds And they lay this body in a cold, cold ground You see, you don't have to cry for me Sing me those sad songs See, nothing can hold me here I'm heading home Yes, now nothing can hold me here I'm heading home Heavenly gates are near And it won't be long until I'm walking gold singing around God's throne nothing can hold me here I'm headed home just a hand clap of praise come on if you really believe that this morning give him a hand clap of praise amen how many know there's resurrection power in the name of Jesus somebody 
somebody say there's resurrection power in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. Well, nothing can hold me here, and I'm headed home. You see, heavenly gates are near. It won't be long until I'm walking on streets of gold.
He's got a sword in his hand. He's riding a white horse across this land. And he's calling out to you and me. Will you ride with me? Will you ride with me? And we'll say yes, Lord. Lord, we'll ride with you. We'll ride with you. And we'll say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We will. We will. We'll stand. sword in his hand and he's riding a white horse across this land listen and he's calling out to you and me will you ride with me will you ride with me and we all say we all say yes lord yes lord yes lord we
bride He's the Lord and she'd be with him Right by his side Yes, that fire in his eyes It's his burning desire That his bride will be with him Right by his side And he's calling out to you
Thank you, Lord. is like a burning desert if the days were miles it'd be a million wide and one can get so thirsty just one drop of mercy but all you'll find are bones where someone else has died but God is your oasis and in dry places do it today Lord he makes flowers grow oh God is your And where his grace is the living waters fl everybody sing it. But God is your oasis and in dry places he makes flowers grow. God is your oasis and where his grace is living waters flow lift your hands and sing it again but God do it today Lord do it today Lord in dry place is he makes flowers grow oh god hallelujah 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 and where his grace is living waters flow but god your oasis and in dry places he makes flowers grow oh God is your oasis and where his grace is living waters flow hallelujah 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 will you help me with the offering father bless this part of the service thank you for all the blessings all the growth all the outreaches all that's going on from our heart we say thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Brothers, help me at the offering. Amen. God bless you. Give you an opportunity to give today. It's good being in the house of the Lord. It is so good. The kindness of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord. His mercy endureth forever. His kindness. His kindness. Give these folk on the platform a hand clap. God bless you. What a team. What a blessing. Mike, are we ready? Come. So are you still 15, 16, 17? Somebody's had a birthday. 29, 29. This is a blizzard of 93, baby. I don't even know why. I told half the people when they asked me my age last year, I was 29, so who really knows at this point? 
an exciting, exciting thing. Dad had a vision, and um, I don't know if anybody remember this, right before COVID, we did this often. And the youth group would get together, and we would make sweet treats. Sometimes in the fall, we would make pumpkin cupcakes, and then we'd make cookies. And we would do it for our officers of our local uh, county. So if we could take a moment, let's give the youth group a hand crap for all their investment, all their time and efforts. So really, really proud of them and what they've done. Well, that, that was kind of the inception of something big and something new. And Dad had a vision. Um, he wanted to take and feed at a larger scale and to just show people that MDT Church cares and loves you. So Mitchell, Liz, if you guys would come up here. These are the heads of the ministry. And they come up with the most amazing name, Miracle Delivery. And they did their first feeding Friday. And I'm going to let these guys talk about it. Unbelievable. I think they were gone t after the drop-off. I think it was like five to ten minutes. I started getting texts of how much it touched people and the impact it made. So I, I know God's going to work at this. You know, we look at things as just getting food. It's, it's God working through stuff. Can somebody say amen? amen. You know, I, I look through my life at the little things God worked through. It, God can do anything with anything, and we just want to make sure ourselves are available. So proud of them. We're so excited to be part of something so great and giving back to our community and to people who touch like the next generation and everybody around them. Um, there was a Bible verse that came to my mind whenever we were coming up with this. And uh, it was Luke 6:38, I believe. And it was give and it sh shall be given unto you. So whenever you do something for the Lord and you, if you give all of everything that you have to it, you'll get blessed in return. And that is our main goal is to be giving unto people and uh, to be a blessing unto people and be a witness to people. And uh, we're just so very excited about it and uh, just pray that the Lord blesses us and blesses this ministry and make it grow each and every day. Micah brought up the idea to me and I was like, I'm so excited for this because one, I love cooking, I love food, but more importantly, I love helping people and I'm so excited to see where this grows. I'm so thankful for this opportunity to help people and help our community, just like you said. If anybody's been around dad and been around us, we, we don't dream small. So uh, the goal is to grow this as big as we can, to feed as many and to scale this. So if anybody wants to be a part of this, what we've done right now, you can go to oasisministries.com. And if you'd like to donate to this, you can donate to the food pantry under apply my donation to. And 100% of those donations are going to help people in need, help people in food, and then this ministry. So, so very, very thankful for this. And another thing... Um, Dad asked me to get a couple stories together about Kara. That kid's got stories. Could I get an amen on that kid if anybody's been around Kara? Um, one thing he wanted me to say for his sermon is, the consistency of a child will push you to a yes. Can I get an amen from a parent on that? One of the things, I, I don't understand. Stuff doesn't matter to me. Stuff's a much, much bigger deal to her than it is to me. And I've, well, me and Jesse will wake up, we'll do the breakfast, we'll do a cup, and then we'll set it down, everything will be laid out, and you can ask Nana and Gigi this, it'll be the wrong fork. And I say, no, that fork works just fine. She's like, no, it's the wrong fork. And I said, no, that, that fork works just fine. So I say, go to eating. Five minutes later, after this is the wrong fork, this is the wrong fork, eventually I'm like, you know what? That's the wrong fork. <laughs> and I'll give it and switch a fork out. She's the same way with two cups. She has this weird weird thing with cups and talking to other parents a little thing I didn't realize how different it was about Kara Kara's never once slept in our bed and we've she's just real you know a little bit distance in that way and I remember recently when she was real real sick she did not want to sleep in the bed with us at all and I was trying to figure out how can we comfort her because she would cough all night we were just up all night in fear we were just oh I hate hearing her so congested in her chest 
So I was like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk her into letting me sleep in the floor of her room, and we'll work that out that way. So I snuck in, acted like I was playing, and I got her to doze off while I was holding her hand. And Joe got her a Care Bear. So I fell asleep, the Care Bear's under my head, and I'm laying there, and I have my hand in her hand. Hadn't slept in two days. And I remember waking up to a wet little breath on my nose, and this kid was sitting on my chest, and she got right in my eyes, and I woke up, and I see this kid. You know how you're dazed and confused? And she goes, Dad, Dad, are we ready to wrestle? <laughs> 4 a.m., I'll never forget that. <clears throat> There's something about a child when it calls out to you, though. There's something about a child when it needs you. And I'm, I'm so excited to hear Pastor Sermon and with the blessing of having my daughter have a slight understanding and excited. Go ahead, Dad. Happy birthday, Micah. Turn around and smile at somebody. Such a wonderful turnout. This just looks wonderful today. Uh, the Lord has given me some of the things that's helped me. I pray it's helped you. But I've been a while since I've been excited about anything that I can apply every day as I am what I want to share today. But uh, I want to say thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you for making my birthday so special. Uh, you love folk, it's hard to be honest sometimes, but uh, I've honestly think for the last three or four months I've been depressed over turning 62. I didn't know, I don't know what I think was going to happen. I don't know what I had in my mind. I thought I was going to just shut down or what. And it, it's been a rough birthday. <laughs> been a rough birthday. Just, uh, and you ought to give Sheila a hand clap for putting up with me. <laughs> And, uh, so, so, I, uh, so uh, it, it took me back. It took me back, and really, my heart was just heavy. And I told nobody but Sheila, nobody. But it took me back to when, when the horrible wreck in Wilkesboro, when Kathy, when Billy and little Bill and Charlotte, and Ronnie and Gary were all killed, and Kathy was so broken, didn't want to, didn't even want to live. And uh, she stood by those caskets and over, those five caskets and over 2,000 people walked by and hugged her neck. And she told me, she said, I know it's going to be rough. She said, but their love has been a healing to me. And uh, the, the birthday party, your gifts, your cards, I got home. And, and honestly, I, I, I think started breaking when I went over and Hannah hugged me behind the cake. I just felt something start breaking off me. And I, and I thought to myself, there's life after 62. She will still love me. Anybody ever get crazy stuff in your mind that becomes reality? Just, I'm just being honest today. So, so this thing just kind of set on me. And then, then Hannah took me over, showed me the cake, and uh, uh, little Hannah Womack showed me the cake. And uh, then you start bringing gifts, and you start hugging me and talking to me. And I sat at home that night and got up in the bed and read your cards and looked at your gifts. And uh, I like being 62. <laughs> so. So thank you for your kindness. Thank you for caring about me and loving me, putting up with me, and encouraging me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dig it, digging on children. This is a Tuesday night. We're going to be praying for our and, and those of you that give me a gift from my heart again. Thank you. You've if, if you've ever heard from the Lord, your love had just lifted my heart, and it was more than your kindness. It's more than a gift. It just, uh, and this has got me searching how, how God can help and how God can move. So from my heart, thank you. And my heart, my heart, I want to preach something different on prayer that, that, that's going to help me. But I, I want to read this before I do. Uh, we're, we're going to start praying Tuesday, but my heart's so heavy for our youth, our, our children. Before, before Bible reading and prayer was expelled from majority of our public schools, and I know we have some of our country schools in little places, Tennessee, the Bible Belt, that stills allow it. Most of them have totally removed it. California, New York, 
uh, the, the north, the far west. But before Bible reading was prior was expelled from our public schools, the following problems were cited by teachers as the leading dis discipline problems with their students. Talking, chewing gum, making noise, running in the halls, getting out of place in line, wearing improper clothing, not putting papers in the wastebasket. Today, teachers are concerned with things like school shootings, assault and batteries, Affairs between students and children, teen pregnancies, sexual transmitted diseases, substance abuse, and teen suicide. America, it wasn't the right decision to take God out. It wasn't the right decision. There wasn't. Could we bow our head and pray for our, our youth? Father, Father, I, I, I pray that... Every, every child, every grandchild represented in this building and those that's watching the internet, those that'll watch on TV, God, I pray that a burden will stir in our heart to cover our babies in prayer. Abraham made a difference when he covered Lot. Samuel, the old prophets, covering his sons in the Lord. God, help us to not get too busy till we don't cover our families. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Please, please, at least two or three times a month, try to come on these Tuesday night prayer services. It's when we're, we're in the book of Acts, where we're getting together and we're praying corporately like they did down at Murray's house. And we're seeing, we're seeing such, such a precious stir and we're seeing God move. So please, once or two or three times a month, try to be part of these two. And for the foundation that's here week after week, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you give the ones a hand clap that's praying, praying, mercy, praying, covering. Would you, would you thank them? This is one of the best recently things I've seen on prayer. I think my next best thing was wrestling with God. How can just, just a man wrestle with, with God in prayer? But this, this, this is going to be right up there beside it in my spirit. Luke, Luke 11 and 1. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, he seized one of his disciples, said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So when you dig in this chapter, the whole, the whole chapter is about, Lord, teach us to pray. How many want the Lord to help us to pray more? Just, just, just to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in heaven as in earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said on them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee, but I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as much as he needeth. And I say unto you, importunity, it means just, just keep on knocking. Hallelujah. I know you're in there. I seen, I seen you close that curtain. You might as well get up. I need a I need a loaf of bread. I know you're in there. I saw your car out here. You might as well get up. I need to borrow an egg. He said, because of his importunity, he's keep knocking. They will rise up and give him as much as he needed. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. I have preached on prayer that part for, for 40 years. I've stopped there. I've stopped there, and, and, and I didn't do it wrong. That was just far as the Lord led me. But now he's led me to another realm, to another place. And I'm, I'm going to start in Luke 11, 11. And this is, Lord, teach us to pray. I didn't realize it. This is still about prayer. I did not catch that. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? If he ask a fish, will he give him for a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? I, I want to preach today, except you become as children, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven, except you become as children. <clears throat> They were having, they were having a, a study, and they were folks together, and this scripture came up, and some, some smart aleck said, yeah, but kids in Bible days, they weren't like these modern children. I think children have always been children. 
So, so I, I want to tell you what I'm preaching today. Don't get that on your mind. I want to, I want to explain the difference between being childish and childlike. I've seen adults be childish. And I've seen adults be childlike. So he didn't say, except you become childish. Elvis was childish. He's saying, I did it my way. That's childish. Very much like the difference between the natural man and the spiritual man. But baby and I, we're so enjoying this season of our grandbabies, William, Karen, Henry, and little, little William, about that, about that big. She, she got one of his little shirts out. It wouldn't, it, it just, he's just so precious. And he's, he's just so keep praying for him. Each one is as precious as, as they're, they're their own little person. And, and I can see so much of their dad and mom in each of them. They're both so much alike, and yet they're so much different. I want to preach on prayer and faith. Jesus is teaching on prayer. He said, whatsoever shall humble himself as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I want to talk about 10 or 11 things after have for the Lord will let me go. But I want to talk about if you'll become a child in your prayer life, you can move heaven. If you'll take on a child likeness, you, you, can, you, can, you can touch the heart of God and move heaven. If, if, you'll, if you'll pray, if you'll hear, hear this little simple sermon today, it can bring a new anointing, a new stir, a new faith, a new confidence to your prayer life. Just, just by hearing these simple thoughts today and applying them, applying them, applying them, applying them. A child, this started in my spirit Tuesday night, a child don't allow the last results of whether you said yes or no to keep it from asking again. Would some parent or grandparent say amen? amen. The child, don't, don't, they do not base the last results of whether you let them get on the slide, you let them have the cookie, you let them, you let them get the ball, you let them watch cartoon. They do not allow the last, the last answer to affect their next petition. We, we've, got, we've got to quit. We've got to quit building our prior life on our last answer. We, we, got, we, got to, we got to stop today determining how hard or how much. Well, well I, pray, I prayed for that and it didn't turn around. Well, I prayed for this and it, nothing changed. Well, I prayed for this and it's getting worse. That, that, baby, that baby keeps asking because it knows the one that's asking loves her. And I'm going to get ahead of myself, but he, that, that, that little boy or girl knows it's in the heart of the one they're petitioning and asking to give them their request. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We, we must stop building our prayer lives on the last prayer we prayed, was it, or was it not answered? But on the Holy Bible that declares God answers prayer. This is your, what you build your prayer on. This is what you build your confidence on. All else is sinking sand, but on Christ, this solid word, this solid rock, I stand. Somebody ought to hold up your Bible, whether it's a book or a phone or an iPad. You ought to just hold it up and say, this is what I'm going to build my prayer our life on. This, Bi this Bible's what, hallelujah, hallelujah. In fact, I wish you'd really help me. If you need to stand up a time or day, you just need to put the devil under your feet and say, I'm going to start back praying, hallelujah. If, if I pray ten prayers and they don't get answered, that don't mean God don't answer prayer. If I pray two prayers and it don't get answered, that means God don't answer prayer. God told Abraham, I'm, I, I really believe, I really believe it was important to men in the Bible to have a family. And I really believe Abraham prayed for a family. I really believe that. And God told him, yes, but not now. Yes, but not now. Yes, but not now. Some of you praying about things God ain't told you no. You're, you're a little like evaded God. You're upset at God because it didn't happen last night or last week. He didn't tell you no. He said it's in the process. Hallelujah. And, and, and you're stubborn up and you're quitting praying and you're looking at results and you're not looking at the one you're praying to. You're, you're looking at the results that you receive and you're allowing the enemy to take your results and keep you from praying. But God God sent a little old country to tell you, don't look at your results. Look at the Word of God. The Word of God says if you pray, He'll answer. If you knock, He'll open. If you'll ask, you'll receive. The Word of God says if you'll seek, you'll find. Hallelujah. 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 I've come to this pulpit to tell somebody to tell the devil, get out of my face. I'm going to pray again. I'm going to be a child. I'm going to be like a child. Somebody just told me, somebody just told me, said, said, send off my papers to get my tag. 
and said, said, I had everything I missed signing one line. They sent everything back to me. They said, we've got to redo this over. We've got to resend it. I want to tell somebody, prayer is not a business venture where you've got to have every T crossed, every line dotted. It's not hallelujah. It's not about how proper you pray. It's about how much you believe. I wish somebody could hear that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody's beating yourself up. You're trying to figure out how to properly pray. You don't have to properly pray. You just got to be broken and say, Oh, Father, Father, I need you. Father, I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Prayer is not a business transition. It's a, it's a conversation, Chip, involved in a relationship. How does somebody please put that on Facebook? Hallelujah. Prayer is not a business transition. It's a conversation involved in a relationship between you and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's a conversation between you. Hallelujah. 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 So, so Bert, Bert Clinton, one of the great preachers, somebody, they, 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 he was having a great revival. It went on for several weeks and people was coming to English professor from a college club and said, Mr. Burke Clinton, and don't you know your ministry would excel if you'd quit your country slang and you'd just, just, just learn proper English? You'd be. He said, sir, you see that woman with sick and you see that man that used to drink and you see this one that lost a child, you see this one. They don't come to my service for an English lesson. They come to get in the presence of God. Hallelujah. They don't come to learn. Hallelujah. I know we ought to study to show ourselves approved. I understand all that. But your prior life is not an English lesson, but between you and God, it's a conversation between you and your father. Hallelujah. Can I say it again? I said it's a conversation between you and your father. It's a conversation between you and your father. Somebody ought to kick the devil in the head. Say, get out of my face. I'm going to spend time with my father. It's not a burden to talk with your father. Quit making prayer work. Quit making prayer a hardship. It ought to be an honor to steal at the feet of your father and call on his name. You got to build it on this Bible. 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have. This is the confidence. Not on whether he did that. This is the confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. He heareth us. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call unto me and I'll answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Psalms 50, 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I'll deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Oh, I, I, I got to stop and talk to somebody right now. Somebody's in trouble. Call on him right now. You, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I know I talked about, I know I talked about taking prayer and Bible out of the school, but as long as there's tests, there's going to be somebody praying in school. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't have to lift my hands to pray. I don't have to close my eyes to pray. I don't have to open my mouth to pray. I can pray aloud as my spirit as I can with my vocal cords. Hallelujah. And the God who hears when I pray out loud hears when I pray in silent. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I prayed many a silent prayer. Oh God, I need you right now. And I've seen him come in. I prayed many prayer. God, won't you help me right now? And I've seen him move over and over and over and over and over. Could I have a witness? Is there anybody in the room that's ever had an answered prayer? Is there anybody in the room? Is there anybody in the room that can declare I've seen God? Is there anybody that it wasn't luck, it wasn't chance, it just didn't. Is there anybody that can declare I have seen the work of God? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Psalms 138, 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and I'll praise thy name. Listen to this. In all my commentaries, I have different ones. In Psalms, I love Charles Spurgeon. And, and, and uh, Charles Spurgeon made the the strangest comment about this. And I worship toward thy holy temple. 
And I'll praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Listen to this. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Look up Charles Spurgeon. He, 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 he began to talk about the power of his name. Do, do, get out some of his little study books. The power of his name. The power of his name. It's a name that's above every name. It's a name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a name. It's a name. Just his name, storms turn around. Just his name, diseases drive. Just his name, stormy wind. Just his name, life comes. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed. In the name of Jesus, turn this thing around. I've seen the name of Jesus stop a car coming at me. I've seen the name of Jesus raise up a standard. I've seen the name of Jesus stop blood that wouldn't quit flowing. I've seen the name of Jesus work. And he said, I've exalted my word about my name. Hallelujah. He said, it's great as my name is. My word's greater. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody ought to praise him out loud. There's no other name. His name's greater than Buddha. His name's greater than Muhammad. His name's greater than Ali. His name's above every name. His name's above every king. His name's above every sickness. His name's above every disease. And yet he's exalted his word, his word above his name. He's lifted his word above his name. Hey, hallelujah. Jehovah the I am. He says, I honor my word more than I honor my name. Who are you? Who do I tell him? Send me. Tell him I am that I am. Hallelujah. But yet I've honored my word more than I that I am. I will worship toward thy holy temple and I'll praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Heaven and earth will pass away. But this divine word will not falter. It will not fail. It will not pass away. Hallelujah. 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 Ethan, run up here, son. Run, run over and stand and lift your hands out like Jesus dying on the cross. I love to preach this and think about this. But the living word, the living word is looking at the written word. And he, he, said, he said, I can't die till ever, ever, ever bit of it's fulfilled. I can't die till ever prophecies fulfill the living. Hallelujah. 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 Give him a hand clap. Thank you, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I'm not Magnify this word. This word says that he answers prayer. A child just won't quit asking. Why? Why was some of you like Mary and Martha? Why did you wrap your prayer up like Lazarus and lay at Summers and say, Jesus, this is too big for you? If you'd have been here, you could have fixed it. But it's too big for you. Somebody needs somebody today. And in, in a few minutes when we make an altar call, somebody needs to take Jesus to your tomb and say, Jesus, yesterday this thing was too big, but it's not too big today. Because I see a big God. I see a mighty God. Yesterday this doctor's report was bigger than you. Yesterday this marriage trouble. Yesterday this finances. Yesterday this might. Yeah. A child keep asking. Because they know the one they're asking loves them. Do you really, 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 really trust that God loves you? Do you really believe that the creator of heaven and earth knows you? A child knows that the one they're asking desires, wants, longs to meet or satisfy their every need. Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Your bills are due, ask. You're sick, he still heals, ask. You're hurting, he's a mender, ask. You're in trouble, he's a deliverer, ask. Your load's heavy, he, 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 he makes loads lighter, ask. This, this is one of my scriptures. This is one of my babe's scriptures. Psalms 9 and 10. But they that know their name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Would you turn around and touch somebody tell them he's not forsaken you? 
Please tell, tell somebody that. He has not forsaken you. I know there's valleys you feel so long. And I know if you live for God long enough, you'll face what Job faced. I looked on my left and I can't see him. And I look on my right and I can't not find him. And I look through the lattice and it feels like he's hid from me. Yet I know my Redeemer lives. I know he lives. He loves you, friend. He loves you. Ephesians 2, 4. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. You, 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 go, you go to a banker and you ask for a loan from somebody that don't love you. You go, you go to a doctor and they're some of the greatest doctors. Do, we, we, oh, you ought to see my daddy. Took him Tuesday, got new teeth and took him Friday. And Dr. Cox is so kind. He cut that off of daddy and he, he uh, quarterized it, burned it and fixed daddy up. That... <laughs> I just hope Daddy's not ready to go court, and I'm tired. <laughs> but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now listen to this. Karen Henry, one precious the other, love much other, but they differ here. Karen, when she said on something... She has more than one approach. Here's the here's, here's one. Stop her ears up. Kara, here's the one that gets me. You're tired. You, I mean, you come in, you're tired. You, you got something that needs to be fixed. She asked a few times, Poppy, let's go play ball. Poppy, let's go ride the four wheeler. Poppy, Poppy, let's go on the porch and ride the cars. And then this is what gets me. I love you, Poppy. <laughs> Poppy, I love you so much. And here's one gets Sheila. Hey, sweetie, sweetie, can we go on the porch? <laughs> can I preach this? Do you ever, do you ever stop praying and start worshiping a little bit? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, help me preach this. Oh, God, break this fever. Oh, God, break this fever. Oh, God. And some, sometime, sometime, boy, I'm, I'm going to get on some touchy ground. Sometime you pray and you start moving from your spirit into your flesh. Sometimes instead of praying here, you start praying out of here. And this thing is enmity against God. You don't see the fever going up. It's still 101, 102.2. And now, now you're, you're praying out of here and you're fighting fear. Yeah. You're fighting what I do if God don't and all this. And, and, before, and before long, you're just simply having a, for the first time, understand why somebody says, I feel like my prayers are bouncing off the wall. Perhaps because they are. Oh, Brother Jerry Stevens, you get your car fixed. Yeah. <laughs> Sometime we think we're talking to God. I wish somebody could hear that. You, God is a spirit. You cannot talk to God when you remain in the carnal. You, you cannot talk to God. This carnal mind is enmity against God. It means literally means an enemy. God, I, I wish you'd send us some groceries, but I guess we cook that cornbread potatoes. As long as you got plan B, you're, you're in the carnal. When that, except you become his child. When that baby approaches, we're going to go slide. That's all that's in their mind. We're going to go slide. We're going to, if this don't work, we'll try this. Except you become as a child. We're going to go slide. We're going to go slide. If we just, just um ourselves, become as a child. Hallelujah. Throw a little bit of praise in. Just throw a little bit of praise in. This is a different section on tying together. I don't want to get too much on this, but just throw, sweetie, 
Nay, nay, sweetie. Okay, Karen, let's go. I'm tired, but let's go. Last evening, planting, I took baby to Lowe. She got her seven plants. And I love my little Sheila. I wanted to plant these for her for the night. We got, I got one of them planted. Here comes Hannah and William and Henry. Henry plays a little bit, slides a little bit. And he comes over. I got the tractor. He grabs his shovel and about hits himself in the head. And then he about hits me in the head. And he's helping me. And he's working so hard. He helps me line up the hose. And I could tell he had a plan. And he looked up her and he said, it's a nice tractor. That's his first a nice tractor. <laughs> he waited a little bit and he said, he said, uh, remember that tractor? <laughs> I just kept working. Then he, then he said, please, Poppy, please, Poppy, please, Poppy, let's ride a tractor. I, babe, I love you. I can care about that plant. <laughs> I can care about digging that next hole. That baby had moved me. You may not like this, but I'm going to be real honest. Did I love him any less the first time he asked? Was he any less important to me? But his his importunity, his continual asking, and his gentleness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel so much faith in here. I feel doctor's reports changing. I feel people getting off of medicine. The doctor said you'd be on the rest of your life. I feel situations turning around. I feel God raising up a standard. I feel God turning finances around. I feel God making a way where there seemed to be no way. But it's not going to happen till somebody prays and confidence that God is. And God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. I wish somebody said out loud, I'm going to go back and pray again. I'm going to seek him again. I'm going to go before him again. So for the next 30 minutes, Henry's working the bucket up and down. We're scraping gravel. We're, and I'm having more fun than him. Don't you know the Lord, the Lord cares about you. He dug a hole. He raked. Here was the setup. Poppy, I love you. Kara got me. Henry says, Poppy, please. Mm -mm -mm. I feel the tenderness of God right now. We've got to to understand who the Lord is again. We've got to understand he's gentle, he's kind, he's merciful, he's loving. Yes, he's a judge, and yes, he's holy, and yes, he's pure, but he's altogether lovely. He's fairest of 10,000. There's no rock like our God. A child, except you become as a child, a child believes that you can fix anything. They have that confidence. If you're enjoying this half as much as I'm enjoying preaching this, this is a good day. A child believes you can fix anything. We're in... in, in, we're in Tryon, Tennessee in our tent revival. John Johns had come down from Noblesville, Indiana. John had never been to, been to church, and, and he came to our little little revivals at Randall Ely's. And John's, John's first day, asked, he, got, he gave his heart to the Lord, and he got saved. And they said, John, you want to testify? And John stood up about 40 years old, and he said, I've had fun. That was his testimony. Fell in love with the Wynn family, and he's, he's in heaven now. But he'd follow around our little tent meetings from come to him. And him and his son, John Johns, little John John, and my son was John. They were under the platform playing. They didn't know I'd come out to the tent. We didn't have no extra money. And I bought John a little little camping set. They had a little can- hunting knife, plastic, and they had a little canteen and some things. And they're playing, and they break his new knife. And I hear little John John said, We'll throw it away and hide it. Nobody won't be mad. They won't, they won't be upset at us. John, my John said, throw it away. My dad can fix anything. <laughs> I know I know if I was going to make me another trip to Walmart. I know I was going to buy me a new roll of duct tape. I just knew that knife's going to get fixed. That baby's got that much confidence in me. 
I wish somebody tell your heavenly father, Lord, you can fix anything. I wish somebody say it till it comes out of your spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In fact, somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, you can fix anything. I know this thing I'm facing looks impossible. I know this report. I know this situation. I know this battle. I know this problem. I know this crisis is bigger than me. But Father, you can, hallelujah, you can fix anything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't want to be mean. But you know why you quit praying about it? You don't believe he can fix anything. You know why you don't fast and seek him anymore about it? You don't believe he can fix anything. If you needed it, you believed him, you'd be in every altar call. You'd be in every prayer line. This is a day he's going to move. This is a day it's going to turn around. This is a day I'm going to touch him. This is a day heaven's going to pour out. In the beginning, who is he? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, created him male and female, created them. One of the times I was so scared, one of the times I was, we took our tent down in, in Middle Tennessee. A few hours from here, took it down, got it down. We had church that night. Brother David, one hand of your daddy was there. We got it loaded by about, about midnight. We're, we're headed, we get on the top of Mont Eagle, I don't know, between two and four. Four of the morning, and Micah's got a really high fever, about a year and a half, two years old, and his fever's really, really high. We're up on this mountain, the, the, uh, uh, don't know whether to find a hospital, emergency, don't know what to do. She checks his fever, and it's so high, and this thing is just set in quickly. This little baby is so desperately sick, so desperately sick. And, 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 and I'm crying and I'm driving and I'm pulling this tent trailer, getting ready to go off Mont Eagle. And, and, I, and I, Lord, I remember I lowered my head. And I looked down, and that moon was a full moon that night. And I remember looking up at that moon, and I feel the same presence I feel in this room right now. I said, Jesus, if you hung that moon, I know you can help this baby. <laughs> This is who you are. You're not a has-been God. You're not a used-to-be God. You're not a weak God. You're not a retired God. You've not run out of miracles. You've not lost your power. Hallelujah. You're not Superman that's found some kryptonite and lost your power. You're not a has-been. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you hug that moon, I know you can help me. I wish 20 people stand to your feet telling that out loud. I know you can help me. I need help. I need help. And I know you can help me. I got nobody else to turn to, but I know you can help me. God said, let there be light in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. And there was light. God, you can fix anything. You can fix anything. Whatever you need, he's able. Psalms 50 and 10. For every beast of the field is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I've not caught that till lately. Julie read the Bible for 50 years. I've not caught that till lately. For, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. For every beast of the forest is mine, the Lord said, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. You know, he, uh, I remember preaching for Brother Mike in Texas. He had, he had two ranches, 1,200 acres. And I remember one time I asked him, well, how many head of cattle do you have? And he used to tell me how many hundred he had. God said, I got so many cattle, I don't even count the cows. I count the hills they're on. <laughs> Is that not good? Hallelujah. 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 I don't, I don't even count the cattle. I just count the hills. Hallelujah. About a thousand on this one, about a thousand over here. I got a thousand hills. I don't need cattle on those hills. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he's able. He's able. Whatever you're facing, he's able. Whatever you need is, he's a fixer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So, so you need, you, you, in your prayer life, you need, you need to stop every once in a while and throw in. My father can fix this. Because when you're praying, when you're praying, doubt's going to try to ease in. Or, or interference is going to try to ease in. And you need to tell your doubt. And you need to tell your interference. I have a father who can. I can't walk on the water, but I have a father who can. 
and I can't make the blind see and the lame walk, but I know a man who can. Hallelujah. I can't take a few fish and loaves and feed a multitude, but I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. I feel miracles in this room. I can't help it. I feel miracles in this room. I feel if somebody will keep praying. Hallelujah. I feel, I, I, I feel reports are going to come out of this room. I feel victories are going to come out of this service. I, I, believe, I believe this service is a seed, and I believe they're going to be a harvest. Hallelujah. You plant, you, hallelujah. You plant one corn seed, you'll get several hundred seeds on, on four or five husks. Hallelujah. This seed's a service, and I believe they're going to be hundreds of, hallelujah, harvest come out of this one service. I feel victory in here. I feel, I feel somebody tell the devil, I'm going to get up and pray again. I'm not, ta- I'm not talking to a congress that don't love me. I'm not talking to a judge that wants to put me away. I'm not talking to a boss that wants to fire me. I'm not talking to a landlord that wants to kick me out. I'm talking to a father who loves me. I'm his child and he's my father. I'm the clay and he's the potter. This is good. This is good. Micah, give me this. A child feels no matter what's going on, they always have 100% of your attention. You know, we, we got this thing, well, you know, little sister Sheila, and Sheila's my hero. I know the Lord will hear her prayer, and Jerry and Joanne, I know he will, and Julie, but man, I don't know if God will hear me or not. I never did this but one time, but a guy came up to me about a few years ago and he said, Brother Wynn, Brother Wynn, I'm thinking about quitting. I just can't do this no more. And I said, what's wrong? It's so bad. He said, God, don't hear my prayer. I said, what do you mean? He said, God will not listen when I pray. I said, I don't understand what you're saying. He said, no. He said, I pray and I just know God don't listen. I only did this one time, but I said, I told him, I said, cuss. I can't cuss, make God mad. I said, so this God that you say loves you, if you cuss, you'll hear me. But if you ask him something, he turns a deaf ear. I said, what kind of picture do you have of God? Who do you think God is? What kind of image have you allowed? I feel, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now help me fix that. Turn around and tell one person, don't you dare cuss. But you leave this service at that. <laughs> oh, this verse will fix it. This verse will fix it. This verse will fix it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. Hallelujah. The eyes of the Lord's over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Jeremiah 29, 13, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. With all your heart. With all your heart. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Mike, is Kara back there? Kara, would you run up here just one second? If you being, if you being a person, will give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Lord? If you just being a man, if you just being a mommy, give good things to your children. How much more will the Lord? I come to tell somebody you're not going under. You're not going to lose. You're not cast down. You're not forsaken. This is not the end of the story. I I, I, I come to tell somebody God is not through with your book. This is not the end of the story. It's the end of a chapter. God is fixing to take that hand that wrote on the sand. He's fixing to take that hand that wrote on the wall in Daniel's day. He's fixing to take that hand that wrote on the stone, the Ten Commandments. And he's about to reach in your life and flip a page said I'm about to start a new chapter in your life God is and God is a rewarder Amen. 
What are we going to do after a while? Are we going to slide, go for a ride? You got your new doctor's kit, ain't you? Well, what not did it have in it? What's that thing you put on your ears? I can't really, really can't. Is it a stethoscope? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> well, which cartoon we gonna watch? Are, you, are we gonna go on the porch and play ball, ride the cars? No. Don't you know it makes God feel good when you come around Him? Come on. Don't you know He longs for you? Don't you know that as, as David wrote, as the heart pan out the water book, so paneth my soul. Don't you know the Lord wants you? He longs for your presence. He, 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 long, he longs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know Nene and Poppy love you? Yeah. Is Henry still your buddy? Is Bailey your buddy? Yeah. Where's Bailey at? Uh, I think she's coming in. I don't see it. She's waiting. Stand up, Bailey. Give Bailey a hand clap. There's your friend. <laughs> Nene, could you bring Henry one minute? Come here, Henry. This is this is this is one on one for somebody. Henry's prayer life is not like Kara. The way Henry asks is not the way Kara asks, and he gets just as much. Well, I'd pray more if I could pray like Sister Sheila. You're not Sister Sheila. You're you. Be who you are. If I could just pray like Jerry and Joanne, if I could pray like Brother Paul. You're not Brother Paul. You're who you are. God don't want you to be, God, I don't want you to be, he's your faith, I don't want you to be somebody else. Louise, I, I, keep, I keep feeling it. Don't, you shared two or three requests, but I feel an answer on the way. Keep praying. Would you stand to your feet, lift your hands, daughter, sister Louise, stand up, lift your hand. I, I feel an answer on the way. I just feel an answer on the way. All the answers on the way. God is, and God is a rewarder. You don't tell him about driving the tractor? Nah. <laughs> Do you want to drive the tractor after a while? Nah. <laughs> Except you become as a child. Except you become as a child. Except you become as a child. You know what things hindered some of our prayer lives? I'm really going to preach. We'll either have an amen or a walk out one. You know what's hindered some of our prayer life? Kara, that's my car. Stop it. I don't like you. You want to go play now? You're my best friend. Except we learn to forgive as a child. God, God, this, this, this God who's holy, he will not hear our prayer when there's hatred in our heart toward each other. Hatred will hinder your prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hall Won't somebody lift your hand and say, God created me a clean heart. Oh God, oh God, oh God, teach me to forgive. He's our example. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. If any man have aught against another, go to the altar and lay your guilt. Hi go, go, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our debt as we forgive those. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who are indebted to us. Forgiveness is an important policy in a relationship with prayer. Forgiveness. If I'm going to be forgiven, 
I have to forgive. I have to forgive. Two children, they engage in the tussle, shouting, I don't like you. Five minutes later, you're my best friend. Ephesians 4.32, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiven one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Matthew 6.14, but if you, if you forgive me of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you yours. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. This is a hindrance to some of our prayer. Children are needy. I mean, babies are needy. They can't protect themselves. They can't provide themselves. And they seldom make the right decisions. Because they see nothing beyond about just having fun right now. We, we want to be Christians. We want to be strong. I don't, and I, none of the Lord wants us to grow up. But he don't want us to grow up and trust in the arm of flesh, even, that, even the flesh that we walk in. I, I believe he wants us to totally depend on him. Somebody wrote, Charles, was it Charles Johnson who wrote, said, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. David said this in Psalm 75, but I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Make no tiring. Psalms 40, 17, but I am poor and needy. Something about, something about not just the cry of a baby, but the need of the cry. Do you, do, it takes an humbling experience, but do you really, will you admit today, I need the Lord? I need the Lord. And, and, and I know there's some of you real strong, and for you it's a heaven and hell issue. I really need the Lord so I'll miss hell and I can go to heaven. And the boy, I, that, that's me, but man, I need him today. I just need him today. I just need him today. I just need him today. So, some, somebody, somebody told somebody, I hear somebody, I hear somebody here say this. Somebody said, do you think you really need the Holy Ghost to go to heaven? They told him, said, I need the Holy Ghost to go to Walmart. Amen, 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 amen. I'm needy, I'm needy, I'm needy. If, if I don't pray, if I don't pray, I make some of the craziest decisions. If I don't really pray, I make some of the, some of the craziest moves. But when I've learned to pray and say, Lord, I need your directions. I need you, I need you, I need you, Lord. I need you, I need you, I need you. A prior, look, look up the word needy, N -E, N E E D Y, and see how many times it's in Psalms. It blew my mind how many times it was. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth the poor also in him that hath no helper. God, ain't nobody help me but you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you, Lord. Bow down thy ear, O Lord. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, Isaiah. 41, 17, when the poor and needy seek water and there is none, their tongue faileth for thirst. The Lord will hear them. The Lord will hear them. He'll answer their cry and their petition. A young child, he's humble. <clears throat> I looked up the word humble, and I know I've looked it up before, but the definition really surprised me. Having a showing a modesty or low esteem of one's own value or importance. A, ch a child don't walk in with, with airs, look who I am and how holy I am and how good I am and how important I am and how precious I am and how a child just walks in. I'm just a little child that needs you. I just need you. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord that he shall lift you up. Without music or anything, could we stand to our feet? Could, could, we, could we just stand in? And I need at least 30 people to come and stand in this altar with me. Some folk that want their... Their, their prayer life renewed. Would, would you stand? Could, I, could 30 people please come and stand with me? Step out of your seats and come and stand in these altars. Let's just, let's just pray a few minutes. Jesus, Jesus, except, except you become as a little child, except you humble yourself and become as a little child, 
Except you just, just realize, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. But he giveth more grace where he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. First Peter 5, 6, humble yourself therefore to the mighty hand of God, that he shall exalt you in due time. Luke 14, 11, whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, but he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Father, I, 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 I want to approach you as a child. I want to learn to approach you as a child. I want to learn to come before you as a child. I want to learn to bow before you as a child. I want to learn to humble myself before you as a child. I want to learn to submit myself before you as a child. Lord, I want to learn. I want to learn. Pray pray all over this building. Lift your voice and pray all over this building. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Oh, God, Lord, let it, let it be a new beginning and a fresh start, Lord. Lord, let it be a new beginning. Yes, Lord, you are my Father. Yes, Lord, you are. Lord, we call on you, Lord. I know you are my Father. I have faith in you, Lord. You're here. You're here. You're Touch him, Lord Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord Jesus. Touch him, Lord Jesus. Touch him, Lord Jesus. Would you pray all over this building? Would somebody, would somebody just, just talk to him in this room right now? Lord, I need you. Father, I need you. Father, I need you. Father, you can fix anything. You can do anything. You can mend anything. You can heal anything. You can change anything. You're a restorer. You're a mender. Lord, I, I hear little. I hear little Henry. Please, Poppy. Please, please, Poppy. God, I, I hear somebody in this room say, "Please, Jesus. Please help me, Jesus." Everyone at your seat, would you lift your voice and start praying, please, Father? Please. Hallelujah! My eyes are dry. My faith is weak. My heart's heavy. Please, Lord. Please, Jesus, please, Jesus, please, Jesus. Please, Jesus, please, Jesus, please, Jesus. Oh, Savior, Savior. If you'd be so kind to help me, those that you see, would you just touch somebody or join hands? Could we pray for each other, Lord? Somebody's prayer life's at a standstill. Somebody feels like that nothing's answered. Why keep praying? Why, why, why keep reaching if nothing's going to turn around? But they're building their, their prayer life on the results and not on the one they're talking to. So today, Lord, let somebody take this sermon and build their prayer life back. Let somebody. That little mama, she's washing dishes or rocking a baby or ironing clothes. And she's sitting in a machine at work, a computer, her desk. God, let her start praying again. God, that little daddy, whether his job is driving or a hammer or a computer, whatever it is, God, let us start praying again. Oh, God, let us return to prayer. Would you pray out loud one more time, Lord? Let us realize today that if I just keep asking, if I keep seeking, if I keep knocking, God is. And God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He that cometh to God must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder. We're just going to keep seeking you. We're going to keep crying out to you. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep reaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother, brother, brother Jeff, would you and Brother David join hands with Bucky right there, right behind you? Brother David, you help him. Lord, you, you encourage this, this young man. Lord, you, you just, just send strength, Lord. Just strength, just strength, Lord. Just, just send strength, Jesus. Jesus, just send strength, Lord. Just send strength, Lord. Just send strength, Jesus. Lord, just, just send strength, Jesus. Just send strength, Lord. Just send strength. Just send strength, Jesus. Just send strength, Lord. Just send strength, Jesus. 
Lord, just send strength. Just send strength, Lord. Just send strength, Jesus. Just send strength, Lord. Send strength, Jesus. Come here, son. All, all your family, come gather around him. His, his sugar just every night, his diabetes, his sugar's been going up to 400, dropping to 50, and they're trying everything. And I, I just felt a touch of the Lord. I just felt, I feel the Lord wants to touch us today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you lift your hands this way? Father, Father, Lord, if you hung the moon, if you hung the moon, Lord, if you hung the moon, Lord, I know you can help us. I know you can help us, Lord. I know you can help us. I know you can help us. <laughs> Please, Father. Please, Father. Go ahead, Mama. The Spirit of the Lord's all over you. Go ahead. Pray, Daddy. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. Lord. <laughs> Look how far they come to church. Look how they get up early. If you need a healing or you know somebody needs a healing, won't you just come? There's a, there's a presence here. Just come and talk to the Lord. Just stand here with us. and Nobody don't even have to touch you. If you just need a healing or you know somebody, I feel healing in this room today, Lord. Hallelujah. The old song says, He was wounded for my transgressions. He's bruised for my iniquity. Chastisement of my peace is upon him. And by his stripes, we're healed. They thought those cattle... Nine tails, they thought they were breaking you, but it was purchasing our healing. They thought that when they were beating you, they thought you'd recant and say you was just a teacher, you wasn't Emmanuel. They thought they thought they would stop you, destroy you, but they didn't know they were fulfilling a prophecy. And you were purchasing our healing. That stripe for my brother wasn't in vain. That stripe for diabetes wasn't in vain. When that whip was low and turned where the kidneys and all things was, Lord, you were paying for every part of our healing. Every part of our healing. You were redeeming us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Turn around, Lord. Can we pray again? Turn around, Lord. Oh, folk, oh, folk would say, I feel it breaking a little bit. Let's pray again. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you got tired a little bit. Sometimes you got to knock again. Sometimes you, hey, sometimes you got to ask again. But remember who we're asking. He loves us. The one we're asking cares about us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Pray about your need all over this room. The battle in your mind, in your health, in your finances, in your home, your, your babies. Pray, 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 pray. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Somebody's knock. He's standing at the door. Somebody knock. Hallelujah. Lord, whisper peace over his spirit. Just peace. 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 Dear brother, I don't know what this means. We've only talked a few times. But I, but I hear it. Little old Jacob said, I'm going to find my Bethel. I'm going back to him all the way. <laughs> God's going to give you a Bethel experience. And there's a place in God the devil told you you'd never get back to, but the devil is a liar. There is a Bethel where he restores us. There is a Bethel where he renews us. Somebody lift your hands and say, I want to find my Bethel. 
I want to find that place in God. Please, Lord. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. Would you lift your hands toward Chuck, Lord? You are our oasis. You are our water in the desert. You are our palm trees in a dry and a thirsty land. You are our shelter. You are our shade. And you know the load my brother carries. And I ask you to speak peace, 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 Lord, just peace. Whisper sweet peace to me. He whispers sweet peace to me when I am cast down, trouble my soul. He whispers sweet peace to me. Can we dismiss with this? He whispers sweet peace to me. He whispers sweet peace to me. When I am cast down and trouble my soul, he whispers sweet peace to me. Remember in your prayer life, except you become as a child. Please come back tonight, Tuesday. We love you. Thank you. God bless you. Don't miss tonight. It's, it's going to be special. Next, next Sunday, next Sunday or Monday. So, and, and Brother Sanchez, Monday and Tuesday. And, and, and when's the birthday party? We're having a graduation party for uh, my daughter next Saturday, the 21st, from 4 to 6.30. Everybody's welcome to come. We love you. God bless you.